Recently, silent cannon Dale Murphy let loose early. Man on, facing Rick Sutcliffe. Murphy hit a blast the other way to right field, and there was never a question. This one was gone. Atlanta led quickly 2-0. Murphy's 11th homer, but first in 18 days. Third inning, Chicago's troubles deepened significantly. Watch Rick Sutcliffe pull up lame here. Pulled hamstring. He's out for an indefinite period of time. The Braves were getting pitching, though. Starter Steve Bedrosian had control trouble, but in the third, with the bases loaded, got Gary Matthews reaching, and Bedrosian was out of the inning. Jeff Dedman uh, pitched terrific ball in middle relief, and then to mop it up, Bruce, Bruce Suter finished up. Easy does it this time. He gets Matthews on a tap out. The Braves get homers from Murphy and Claudel Washington and shut out the Cubs. We go next to Montreal, West Division leading Padres and their leader, Dick Williams, were in. Game was tight until the fifth. Then San Diego broke it open. Kevin McReynolds hit a shot to left, and it skipped by Tim Raines. And while it did, two runs scored to trigger a four-run inning. The rest was handled admirably from the pitcher's mound. The Padres' Andy Hawkins faced 11 hits through seven and proved again last year's World Series sharp effort uh, was no fluke because Hawkins ran his record to 8-0. and Terry Kennedy and uh, Greg Nettles, four hits apiece. San Diego wins the series, holds on to the lead in the West. Kevin? Still in the National League, we go to New York's Shea Stadium, where the first-place Mets were looking to avenge yesterday's 8-2 loss to the West Cellar dwellers, the San Francisco Giants. Dave LaPointe, no guitar, no matter. We got a Louisville slugger. Top of the first, one man on, Jeff Leonard cranks one to left field. That's a two-run shot, and the Giants led the Mets 2 to nothing. But now to the bottom of the sixth, bases loaded, Mets trailing 2-1, to one. Howard Johnson hits this grounder, gets through the right side of the infield, two-run score, making it 3-2, to two. that was the final, and coupled with the Cubs' loss to the Braves, the Mets now lead Chicago in the National League West by two and a half games. On to the vet, and the kid's favorite, the Philly Fanatic. And we'll pick it up in the top of the six against the Dodgers. Mike Marshall hits a solo shot to center his seventh of the year. That puts the Dodgers on top of the Phillies, 3-1. to one. And once again, it was Fernando Valenzuela, masterful for the Dodgers. Pitching came through here. He strikes out Von Hayes, his fifth of six on the day. And the final from the bet, the Dodgers three and the Phillies two. On to the Astrodome, where the cards were taken on the Astros. Game tied at two in the fifth. Houston leadoff batter Alan Ashby sends one over the left field wall, and the Astros take a three to two advantage. But half an inning later, the leading hitter in the National League, Tommy Herr, singles to center. That brings the fleet Willie McGee around from second. Her second RBI on the day, and the game was knotted again at three. Then in the bottom of the sixth, with two outs, Craig Reynolds drops a little blooper to shallow left center field. Two runs score to break the tie, and the Astros go on to win the final. Houston, seven, and St. Louis, three. Nick? Now to the American League into the hottest team in baseball. The Yankees took a six-game winning streak into Anaheim, looking to sweep the Angels. Troubled Yankee Ed Whitson was nearly perfect through uh, five, then gave up a two-run homer to Brian Downing and lost his lead. Then in the eighth, Rupert Jones facing the relief that followed with a man on. Cracked a two-run shot, this off Rich Bordy, to make it 4-1. Nope. But a huge key for California today in all season, Donnie Moore. Here he faced Dave Winfield and won. Moore came to the Angels as a free agent when the Braves left him unprotected. Got his ninth save. He's now gone over 22 innings without giving up an earned run. Moore's ERA is a sterling 0.76. We go next to the Metrodome Twins in Toronto. An assorted fan or two, actually over 25,000, came to watch the best hitting team in baseball take charge. Tom Brunanski having the best season of his career, clubbed his 11th of the year. This a two-run shot off Jays starter Doyle Alexander that made it 4-1. The Twins are hitting 300 as a team. And leading the league in hits is Kirby Puckett. And he added two more today. This RBI single up the middle hiked the Twins lead to 7-1. The flip side was the Twins finally got some relief. Pete Filson got the last out here as Puckett chased down this fly. Filson threw seven and two-thirds innings of three-hit relief. Minnesota crushed Toronto eight to two. Finally, to Comiskey Park, Chicago, Texas Rangers, a new manager, Bobby Valentine, trying to turn around a disastrous season. Rangers set out Charlie Huff, and the game was tied in the seventh when the White Sox rookie, Darrell Boston, broke an 0 for 17 slump by jumping on a knuckleball and drilling it to dead center. Greg Walker smashed a three-run homer later. Chicago got a combined three-hitter from Tim Lawler, Gene Nelson, and Bob James, and put away Texas 5-1, Kevin.
And in just a minute, horse flesh and horsepower grab their share of the sports page as we look back on the Preakness and check in on the Indy time trials. And stay tuned. The end of the show, our own Paul Ryden goes to college at Florida State, ends up in the circus. We, or he, will explain. But first, the rest of the Major League Baseball results. Stay with us. <laughs> 